Okay, hopefully you can see it all okay. Um, I'm using the left hand surface book just so that I can see all the comments because I've got the uh, camera set up a little bit strange today. So, so I should hopefully be able to see those flowing in. Yeah, I can see them. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, the surface dial. That's this one here. Um, it's coming out today. It's $99. Um, we obviously saw it announced with the Surface Studio um, a few weeks ago now. Um, or was it a few weeks? About two weeks, something like that. Anyway, um, it's primarily going to be used as the input device for the Surface Studio, but you can obviously buy it for the $99 separately. So that does mean you can use it with any Windows 10 PC or the Surface Pro 4 that I've got here, or even the Surface Book. Um, Next year it's going to get on-screen functionality, but at the moment you can only use it off-screen. Um, and I think that's going to come around about the creators update, so probably like March time. Um, so what can you do it off-screen? Um, the basic stuff, you can obviously control volume up and down by, by uh, spinning it like a dial. Um, other stuff you can do, you can obviously hold down on the actual dial and it gives you different context uh, menus here. So you, the most basic stuff, I've, I've obviously got Spotify running at the moment, so you can see the next track um, stuff will pop up. But the most basic will be brightness and volume. Um, you can control a lot of them, the uh, wheel settings in the, uh, the settings uh, panel in Windows 10. So you've obviously you can choose undo. Uh, zoom, uh, scrolling up and down functionality. And those will depend um, upon what app you're using. Um, so if I use Spotify, for example, um, you'll hold down and get the, the relevant menu so you can change the functionality. At the moment, it'll probably be set. So that's set to doing different tracks so I can skip between the two. Um, but you can hold down and change it to volume. So then it will control the volume and then hitting hitting on it once will mute it or unmute it. Um, I think the basic uh, stuff does the volume. So if you don't customise it too much, it'll do volume up and down and, and tapping and untapping will play and pause. Um, so that's kind of still really basic stuff for it. Where it kind of gets more interesting um, is when you use apps like Sketchable. So this is the one that I sort of played around with the, with the studio when they first announced it. Um, and this one's super interesting. Although you can't use it on the on the actual screen, um, you can just click and it will bring up the context menu. So you have to kind of like hold. So it is almost like using a mouse when you're when you're clicking down on the mouse. Um, so yeah, if you click on this one and tap in again, I've got the color options here for the pen, and you can then adjust it whilst you're inking. So it's kind of interesting when you when you start looping it up together with the pen. Um, I haven't used it too much um, with with the Surface Pro 4, um, like in in this sort of mode, because um, it's probably going to be better to, for for a studio really. Um, but it's kind of interesting. I think it's going to be more interesting once other apps start to support it. Um, I've tried like stuff like Word, and you basically get the, the most useful thing is zoom functions at the moment to be able to zoom in on the document that you're you're working on. Um, let me try and show you that. Um, zoom. Okay, and it's not even working in Word at the moment, so it's kind of limited on in different apps. So, um, okay, I'm gonna take some questions so I can sort of talk you through this. I'm gonna look at this screen, so I can see brush size at the moment that people are asking. Um, See so yeah, if you've got any questions about how it works. In I can show you. Let me show you in Internet Explorer. You can also. I think you can use it for scrolling in here. Um, you can move that. Although it doesn't seem to be liking the scrolling feature at the moment. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So you can use that for scrolling. Again, it'd be interesting if you could use it to like click and activate Cortana and stuff like that. Um, you can't seem to do that at the moment. So is it a click, click or a tap? Um, so it's a click. So there's no there's no tap functionality. You can't just tap on it. Um, it's not like a touch screen or anything like that on here. Um, oh wait, actually, wait. I think you can scroll. So I don't think you can. I don't think you can tap in here in this app. But you can. You, you click to activate the radio menus if that makes sense. And then you can. Yeah, you have to. You, you have to kind of. It, a, a, a touching on the tap on the top here does very small controls, whereas that does the larger controls for the uh, for the inking. So if you notice, I don't know if I can really show you it, but if you look at the the height example on it, it's one seven six. If I scroll that, it scrolls very slightly. 
and it's all that that's that's the same um when you dig down in these radial menus as well so if i if i change the diameter of the pen now i'll try and oops i'll try and show you this more clearly so you see it's small at the moment if i change it when i'm not actually inking on the screen it goes it goes a lot larger but once you start inking and then get you get those smaller controls and if you can watch the radio menu, and that's kind of the same for the, the for the top. So you're not you, you're not you you're necessarily using it as a touch screen to like activate controls, but you're using it for like really small, minute variations on whatever you're doing. If that makes sense. Um, yeah, so that does that makes sense. Uh, okay. Any other questions in terms of anything else you can do with it? I'm still kind of exploring what exactly you can do with it as well. So. I know it's early, but is this something you would recommend for Surface Pro 4? Um, I don't know. I think I'd probably recommend it more for... I can't find the answer well, to the question that's I have. Alexa trying to activate. Um, I'd probably more likely recommend it for people who are using a desktop computer rather than a, a, a laptop, because it doesn't really make all that much sense with a laptop. Um, I think it'd probably make more sense once you can use it on the screen, maybe. Um, but it seems like more of a thing you're going to use as a desktop, like a dedicated PC. So it could be useful to to combine that extra input um, with a with a keyboard and mouse, uh, where you don't necessarily have a, a a touchpad for gestures and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I don't know I don't know whether I'd use it necessarily with a Surface Pro Four um, or a book because I'm I'm using those on the road a lot of the time rather than you know as a desktop PC. So um, okay, any other questions on the Surface Dial before I end the Periscope? But yeah, I mean it's it's cool. Um, you can obviously you, you just literally pull off the back, and it's just two ba two uh, two batteries that power it. So it's a pretty simple device. You just pair it with Bluetooth. You can pair this to any PC really. So does it stick to the screen well? I'll show you. So at this angle, not very well. You'll see it slipping off. I won't let it crash into the keyboard. Um, but it really depends on the angle. So if I lower it a little bit, then it sticks fine. Um, and that's obviously, you know, it's, it's always going to vary on what you do. If if if, if you've got it at full, the full uh, reading mode, shall we say, or the tablet mode of um, the Surface Pro 4, it it works fine. You can keep going. I think until you really get up into sort of like the traditional sort of laptop mode that you'd have it in, that's when it starts to slide off. So you can see it going there. So yeah, I mean, it, it does stick to the screen just fine though. But you won't be able to, so with the studio, you can obviously stick it on the screen um, and then hold down and activate the radial menu under where it is. But it doesn't have that sensing capability yet. Um, that's coming in a firmware update. Um, is it heavy? No, not particularly. Um, I'd say it's, it's, I mean, it's relatively weighty, but um, it just feels like a magnet, really. Um, yeah, not not particularly heavy. You could easily throw it in a bag, so. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a simple looking device, but I think it's interesting what the people will be able to do with it with apps. Um, whether third party developers really decide to go with this um, and make it, you know, available across all the apps. Um, Spotify have obviously kind of integrated it with the next track functionality, but it's not, there's not a ton of integration there. Um, but nevertheless, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see what people do with that. So. Is it worth getting at the moment? Um, I would say probably not, um, just until you know more apps support it, really. Um, and I think it's more primarily for the, the studio, so it'd probably be more useful in the studio um, rather than as a standalone device. Um, and I, yeah, I think like the, the creators update would probably make more sense with that. Um, I'd imagine or I'd hope that Microsoft can add some other stuff like. Just being able to launch Cortana or something like that, um, or just quick shortcuts and stuff like that would, would be interesting. Um, they're doing a lot of stuff, I think I've got the creators update on here actually. So they're doing a lot of stuff with the touchpad at the moment, with the custom gestures. Um, which are kind of like better touch tool on OS X or Mac OS, however you want to call it these days. They're kind of like that. Um, so I'm interested to see if they can sort of apply those gesture controls on here, because you've obviously got the ability to do multiple gestures on there. Um, and it can obviously detect them quite well. Um, so, you know, for gestures, this could be super interesting. Um, but I think it's really early days in terms of what they're trying to do with it. It's obviously for the studio. So, um, can you use it as the same way as on Surface Hub? Um, I'm not entirely sure what you mean, but I, I assume you mean can you use it on the Surface Hub um, or can you use it on the screen on the Surface Hub? You wouldn't be able to use it on the screen on the Surface Hub. Um, 
but you will be able to, I mean, you can literally use this with any Windows 10 PC. It's just Bluetooth, you just take off the back, pair it um, with the with the little button there, um, and then any, any PC can use it off desk, um, and just literally at the side. Um, so, yeah, any any PC can use it. And you'll get these menus, it's just, the functionality that was really interesting was on the studio where you could obviously place it on the screen, um, and that is coming to the Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Book, uh, but not until around about probably March next year with a firmware update. So, all right, cool. Well, I'm going to end it there. Um, I'm probably going to have a deeper dive on on the Verge with you know what you can do with with and without um, the functionality in each app. So, look out for that. All right, thanks for joining.